Hello, and welcome to the Professor Podcast with Ruth and Claire. Each episode, we talk about a particular topic in the life of a professor. Ruth is a visiting professor at a large university in Ireland, and Claire is an associate professor at a primarily undergraduate university in Northern California. The purpose of our podcast is reflection, so we bring something we think is working and something we're working on to discuss. Welcome to the Professor Podcast with Ruth and Claire. I'm Ruth. And I'm Claire. And today we're talking about going from participant to organizer. But first, Ruth, how was your week? My week was great. I am I'm so excited about this weekend because... Ooh. Yeah, my foster sister got me a... Like, we're going to a weaving workshop, like, all Ooh. day Saturday and all day Sunday. Wow, and that sounds so fun. I know. So I just... I, I've kind of lost... Like, somehow in the stress pandemic moving I kind of lost my knitting mojo a little bit like oh your knitting I, mojo I know and like I used to like there was such a rare day that I didn't knit and now it can go like months and then I'll kind of pick up the needles and be like oh I love this this is great and then it'll sort of go again so yeah I yeah I just haven't like engaged with that stuff that much and I'm hoping yeah I'm very excited and it just feels like absolute luxury like to go and do this thing so I'm How wonderful. very excited. And I want to tell you one other thing, which isn't that mind blowing to probably everyone else in the world. But to me, it was where my girls like they've needed new shoes like sneakers for ages. Uh -huh. And I keep trying to measure their feet and trying to look at stuff online. And I bought shoes online before and they've always been the wrong size. And I just always <laughs> never like it's just always bad. So I was yeah. looking at shoes online and my colleague was like, do you know there's a shop in your neighborhood that actually sells those? And I was like, mm. like I don't know why that hadn't occurred to me, but I went to the shop and it was so great. They just measured oh. their feet. And the thing that really blew my mind was the shoes were cheaper in the little shop than they wow. were online, which always, I always assume it's going to be the other way. So it's reminded me that sometimes it's just worth finding an actual brick and mortar shop and going into it. So there you go. That's so nice. It's it's really, I love the example of the value of the brick and mortar shop. And it's so nice, like your girls can just try on the shoes and be like, do oh. these fit? And then if they do and they like them, you can get them. And that's wonderful. And they were so overdue to get new, we call them runners here, but sneakers. They literally were like goats with springs on their feet. Like they were like oh. leaping out of the shop. Because like, you know, when you get new <laughs> sneakers, you're just like so springy. And so I felt really bad oh. that I waited so long to get them new That's shoes. So nice. But anyway, yeah, it was great. I was just like, wow, this is mind blowing because it was so much cheaper. Anyway, how was your week? My week was great. Um, I've been doing this fun thing. So so I have one side of the family where we meet weekly and do a crossword puzzle online. And oh, we just, oh, my God. I've never heard fun. about this before. Oh, oh my God, I know. Amazing. I love it. It's it's so great. And then I just recently initiated the other side of the family. We're now meeting and doing an online card game, which oh. is like double whammy because I love card games. I really love especially like hearts and spades and those trick-based card games. And... Um, it works really well to do it online. And so now it it's like, like hanging out. Is it like you go to a site? Yes, we go to a site. We're using Trickster cards and it works really well. You can actually like chat um, and have video while you're playing the cards and then they deal out the hands for you. And um, it's been super fun. So it's like, yeah, double of being able to play the game and hang out with the family and it's so nice. Claire, I think I've, I've known you for seven years now. And I swear every time I'm like, I kind of know Claire. And then something else <laughs> busts out. So I did not know we should talk about crosswords. I love crosswords. Oh, yes. So, so much. Fun. Oh, my so God. Fun. So fun. Yeah. That's awesome. I was about to say, have you got a quote for us this week? But I have a quote. So <laughs> Great. What's um, the quote? So I'm redoing a quote that we did in oh, the early days. But extra I, useful. Extra. Yeah. Well, right now it's very... Irish season because it's around St. Patrick's Day and it's kind of like this whole month here about like a lot to do with Irish culture and stuff. So anyway, I'm coming back to Maeve Binchy because as I think everybody knows on here, I'm obsessed with her. But here is the quote. So there's no makeovers in my books. The ugly duckling does not become a beautiful swan. She becomes a confident duck able to take charge of her own life and problems. I love this so much because it's just like, yes, what if you just became... So recently I was on this panel for women in STEM mm -hmm. and I was thinking about 
how we just need to hear about more like mediocre normal women in STEM, mm. not women who are like curing cancer and also getting Olympic gold medals or like <laughs> climbing Mount Everest. You know, just like really normal people who are like uh-huh. kind of okay at physics and they also like watch Netflix and read romance novels or whatever, like not like extraordinary, amazing people. So I think there's just so much to celebrate about normal people doing normal things and enjoying them. So that's where I'm going with that. For me, that's kind of getting away from this obligation and like shoulds of like, you should be top of your field in physics and an Olympic gold medalist and whatever else, you know, and um, really it's about doing what you want to do with your life and so I love the idea of getting away from those shoulds and deciding what it is you want to be great at I know it's the idea that you have to be exceptional to be allowed to do something Mm -hmm. is just so it just keeps so many people away from doing things so yeah totally yep yep that's interesting because it does relate to my thoughts of going from (laughs) participant to organizer (laughs) (laughs) which is like I'm like but I don't agree with that for this for myself because I'm not exceptional at organizing, so I should not try. Okay, yes. What are we talking about today? So we're talking about, I think you and I are both in a scenario where we're doing uh, planning a big thing. And in the past, we have been involved with planning similar things, but in a different role. And um, yes. so we're both kind of thinking about being in this more organizer thinking about different details than we might have thought about in the past kind of role and how that affects our planning. And just, just the, I I mean, I'm just interested to realize there is this whole different role that I'm now in. So um, anyway, yeah. What do you have anything to add? No, totally. Should we say what we're, what's the big project we're working on? Because they're quite different, but I think they're similar in some ways. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I guess in my new role, I think I've mentioned on here, there is more events happening Mm -hmm. And most of the events I've been involved with so far have been not small, but not huge. And then someone else was really the person in charge. Mm -hmm. And then we're now having this like five day event that's going to have like 600 students coming through. Um, Mm And it's we're calling it Maths Fest. I didn't mean for that to end up being the solidified title. But anyway, that's now I've told too many people, so I can't remember. (laughs) That's what it's called. (laughs) Classic. um, Yes, totally. And what about you? What is the thing you're involved with? Yeah, so for me, it's research cruises. And so I've been involved with research cruises in the past, but it's kind of gone from, you know, my first research cruise, I was really making sure I had everything to do my research and, you know, backups Mm -hmm. of everything. And then, you know, a little bit later, I had to have the stuff for my research, but also the stuff, you know, I'm, I'm collaborating with some other people and making sure that I understand what I need to have for their work, too. And now I'm co-chief scientist and I'm really looking from a much more bird's eye view of all these different scientists are going to get on this boat and I need to make sure they all have whatever they need to do their research. And then I also need whatever I need to do my research. So it's really just a different um, level of thinking and different, different way of seeing and preparing for the cruise and making sure that... I've done all the things I can do to make it run smoothly. And so now the stuff of bringing what I need to do my research is actually really easy. It feels really easy because I've done that before. But thinking about what other people might need and preparing for that feels really new and um, like a different challenge that I haven't thought about before. I don't want to stress you out. But all I keep thinking is like, but your thing's at sea. Like you're actually in a boat in the ocean. Like maybe I need to every time I'm feeling stressed, I'm like, well, I'm not in the ocean so (laughs) sorry that's really unhelpful to you and I know you have the experience but I'm just like oh yeah I understand that's why we have backups for backups because you can't Mm. go to Home Depot when you are at sea (laughs) (laughs) Um, so what's working for you with switching roles and getting to this more organizer kind of role I think for me the biggest thing is this really great team that's already Mm -hmm. there and that I'm a part of and they have this huge wealth of experience of doing Mm -hmm. all of these things Mm -hmm. and everybody has been incredibly kind and is like hey friend have you thought about this thing and I think I told you during the week because everything I did before so like being a professor does require a lot of organization Mm -hmm. but in a very particular realm like you're organizing content and material and like you're not 
I don't know, like you rock up to the classroom that you're told to go to. And at the time you're told, like, it's not those kind of things you have to figure out. So, ah, you don't have to design where is your classroom and which room you rented and how many seats are there going to be. And that's just picked. Yeah, totally. And then like we were involved in a project where it was like, you know, um, what is the word? immersion weeks and there was lots of stuff going on and all of the professors would talk and talk and talk and then we'd make some kind of decision and then there was these two miracle workers who actually made those things happen and thought about things like will a bus fit into this like place we want to go or whatever you're right sure and so there was something during the week where like I had a conversation with someone and we made a decision that yes we're going to buy food for this particular thing and I was like great decision done I've written that down brilliant and then like someone came back to me a week later and they were like so did you like contact the caterers and I was like who me what like why and it was so I felt so ridiculous that I was just like no it's been decided like it's gonna happen somehow instead of I had no concept that like I was the mm-hmm. one who had to go and make it happen so sure that's It's definitely weird. That's super interesting because it'd be so obvious to you that you'd have to make the content for some activity, but it's not obvious that you have to handle the details of how are we going to do, how are we going to get all the materials, and yeah, how is everyone going to get the food, are the buses going to fit? No, but yeah, and there's a thing with the kids where I'm like, do you guys think fairies come in the middle of the night and put away your clothes or whatever it is? And then I'm like, (laughs) oh, I actually seem to think that about lots of things. But so I think... Like, if I just existed in a vacuum and rocked up and had to plan something like this, it would be an actual train wreck. So the fact that there's so many people and there was someone who was like, hey, friend, did you call the caterer? And that's really good. That is super helpful. And just watching them in action and like someone asked me to prepare a task list for the festival and another colleague saw my great distress and shared with me their task list. And so it's wonderful. Just really helpful to see all of those things and to have that and I guess yeah I don't know I guess there never has been probably like who did it first I don't know but I'm really glad to like have all of that (laughs) around me because I just can't see how I would otherwise yeah no I love that and I mean it just goes to show so the next time you organize such an event it'll be obvious you need to call the caterers you'll have called the caterers before you'll know what kind of information it'll just be so much easier so Anyway, I love that somebody else who's already done that can say, hey, can, yeah. don't forget this detail. Yeah. yeah. So what about you? What's working for you? Yeah, well, I guess, um, I, I guess I said earlier, the things that I would have worried about on previous cruises are now kind of old hat, and I can expand. Um, I, I am comfortable enough with them that I can have some capacity for thinking about something beyond them. So that's really cool. And I guess... I also really like seeing this bigger picture. Like, you know, there were obviously chief scientists on the cruises I've been on in the past, but I didn't really know what they did, I guess, kind of kind of like what you're saying. Um, and so in this cruise where I'm co-chief scientist, some of the things that are coming up are just things I wouldn't have thought of before. Like, like we want to deploy this instrument off the side of the ship, and it has to be pretty far away from the ship, like 30 feet or so, so that it's sampling water that hasn't been contaminated by the ship because we're measuring iron and we're on an iron ship and it's a, it's a whole thing. Mm. And now, these instruments are fairly common in the trace metal chemical oceanography community and usually we deploy them off a crane. But the trace metal chemical oceanography community is kind of a small community and the ship folks are saying we don't normally deploy instruments off a crane. And so we're trying to like reconcile, well, how do we... how like, is there a different way we could deploy it? Can this be an exception? Like, you know, we're just trying to figure out those kind of details. Um, so that's just something I hadn't thought about thinking about. I hadn't thought about preparing for a cruise at that level of how do we actually get the samples before. Um, oh, yeah. I'd more been the person, like, once we have the water on the ship, let's put it in a bottle and let's analyze the 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 seawater and so I've been at that level but I haven't been at the big picture how do we actually get the water onto the ship kind of thing before so oh, that's yeah. really interesting and then yeah, that's totally do you feel like can I ask you this too like yeah is it just like a complete impossibility that someone could rock up and be an organizer of this cruise without having participated as a participant before I don't think you, you would be chief scientist if you hadn't already been to sea on a research cruise before i mean uh, maybe but i i I would think not 
it sounds like you sort of have like built your like your responsibilities have grown maybe each time you've gone on something like this. I think so. I think that kind of just mm-hmm. it just happens kind of naturally. Yeah. Um, Sorry, you were going to say then, something else that's working. Oh yeah, yeah. I was just going to say the other thing that I hadn't really thought about as being a role of this organizer is um, helping facilitate between groups who are coming to see. So like we have a couple different people who are measuring things that are either related to each other or useful for each other. And so we need, it's important to get those groups together and say, hey, person A, what kinds of samples do you need analyzed for X that person B can analyze? And like, is it possible for Mm. person B to analyze that? Or is that too many samples? Let's talk about, you know. And so just coordinating across all these people is something I hadn't really realized. Now looking back, so this is really cool. Seeing the bigger picture, I can look back and see that my grad school advisor was certainly thinking about these. I remember going to see, and this was back when I was just worried about what I had to analyze, and you know, a few other people needed me to analyze stuff, so I just had to figure out how many samples do they want me to analyze, bring enough bottles for their samples and my samples. But I, I now, looking back, can see that my advisor realized there are going to be too many samples for Claire to analyze. We need to get another person who can also analyze the same thing she's analyzing, uh-huh. and we'll have both of them. In the So he was thinking about all those things, of course, but I didn't really, at the time, I hadn't thought about, oh, I'm going to max out. You're just like, <laughs> this, is, this is the right amount of samples. I wonder how exactly. that happens. Exactly. <laughs> So, yeah. So anyway, I guess what's working for me is seeing that I'm improving, that, you know, the things that I was really nervous about before now seem easy and so I can mm-hmm. I can expand. And just seeing this bigger picture um, is really exciting of how these projects get Excellent. done. Yeah. Cool. What about you? What are you working on? I think I really get stuck with the chicken and egg of okay. the situations. Okay. Do you know what I mean? Like, I get kind of a bit paralyzed sometimes between like, oh, how, like, how are we going to choose the date? Or should we choose the date first or the venue first? Or oh like, do you goodness, know what I mean? So and hard, just yeah. getting kind of stuck with things. And like, mm-hmm. this is like, it, it's not last minute by any stretch, but it's not a huge amount of time. But like, I probably needed to go out there and start asking for people to come and commit their time to this earlier Mm -hmm. but then I was like but I don't have the date solidified and I can't Mm -hmm. get the date solidified until but what if the people aren't available and so Uh, sometimes I can get stuck in those loops do you know what I mean Mm -hmm. of like really you just have to get on with it or maybe just decide a thing or I don't know so that I think probably really does come with experience and just being Mm -hmm. like you know whatever and it was really helpful in the end like we have someone who is an actual like teacher from secondary schools. And then she was great because she was like, these dates are going to work. They're not going to work at the end. Move on. Mm -hmm. And so that was (laughs) super helpful. So I think I kind of need to have some choices eliminated for me to proceed because I get a bit Mm -hmm. stuck, like choice paralysis or something. And then the other thing that I'm working on is just getting up out of the office chair and going and talking to people is probably so much easier or picking up the phone like emails are great but like sometimes especially when there's a chicken and egg situation going on it can be kind of hard to convey what you're trying to do and Mm -hmm. I don't know I think I'm still in such pandemic brain where I'm like no maximum efficiency is sitting at my desk and writing these emails (laughs) when really yes it would take 10 minutes to walk over to the venue that we're doing the thing but it Mm -hmm. would just be you know, because I had a colleague and she actually went and went to the venue and sorted out a whole bunch of stuff that was taking ages to resolve. So mm-hmm. I think sometimes it's just better to just go and talk to people and stop. Yes. I don't know. I get so stuck in sort of planning preparation stages or I don't know. Yeah. No, totally. Then, I know what you mean. It's actually coming back to the go to the shoe shop thing where it's like, actually, yes. this is more efficient and more fun and more productive and yes. gets us the oh, thing we want. Yes, totally. And it seems like you're somehow saving all of this time and energy by doing stuff from home. Mm -hmm. And it's really not. So yes, I hadn't actually made that connection, but that's exactly it. That's really interesting. And I know what you mean. Like sometimes, I mean, I I guess I've had analogous things with the the research crews, but yeah, you, you, there's five different options and they're all fine. We just need to decide between them. But it's really hard to convey that in an email. If you were on the phone with somebody, you could say, 
can we eliminate any of these options? Are any of them better for you? But if you're in an email, you're like, we could do it this way, could do it this way. It just feels really wishy-washy. They're like, I don't know. How do I decide? How do I respond to that? Um, Yeah. It's really hard to move forward without that actual communication. I like that. What are you working on? I'm working on keeping my attitude as I'm doing my best. And I think, so this cruise was originally scheduled, my goodness, let's see. It was scheduled for 2021, and then it was delayed to 2022, and then it was delayed to 2023. So we've had a lot of shakeups. Anyway, so that, that was another complication added in. But how it relates to doing my best is that last year... I was in the exact same role. We were preparing for the same cruise on the same ship with most of the same people. But I really had this mindset of like, I don't know how to do this. I'm not confident I can make it go without a hitch. And I need to make it go without a hitch. And that was just really stressful and I hated working on it. Oh, Claire, that's like literally like you just read my thoughts that I've been having all the time. It's like, thank you for accurately summarizing my freak out feelings. But yes, sorry, yes, go ahead. Exactly. And so it's that dichotomy of like, it has to go flawlessly and I don't know that I can make it go flawlessly. I'm not flawlessly. the person to make it go flawlessly. Yes, yeah, definitely. exactly. Yeah. So now I'm trying to remember instead that I'm doing my best and my best is pretty good. You know, right. I'm going to work to figure out how to deploy that instrument and whether we can do it off the crane or what, I'm sure we'll figure out something. If it all falls apart and we can't deploy that instrument, it'll be okay. I was kind of talking yeah. about this um, a few episodes ago when we were talking about um, not judging people and including oh, yeah. ourselves and just focusing on the task that we're trying to do. And so I was getting really in my head last year, and I'm doing a much better job of not getting in my head this year, of... Um, judging myself so harshly for not being able to get this thing done instead of focusing on how are we going to get the thing done. And so now I'm trying to just do my best to get the things done for the cruise and accept that, I mean, I think a huge part of it is accepting that it's possible that something will go wrong and we'll try to make it not go wrong and we'll try to fix it when things do go wrong, but I'm just doing my best and that is pretty good and I'm sure there's going to be some problems but we'll work on them and that's fine so I'm trying to maintain that attitude which is much more fun much more empowering much more exciting much more likely actually for it to go well um, because I'm actually trying to figure out how to do things and thinking about how to do them and comfortable with the possibility that something might go wrong because there's always something that goes wrong and that's okay Um, I don't know you know what I mean totally and it's like the kind of the poison of perfection right because yes and like I think there is people who are motivated by perfection and that's I'm that's great but for me it just becomes like I can't do this like there's no way I can do this so I won't even I can't I just can't engage with it but you're right Mm -hmm. when you're because I've actually had like my boss was like this doesn't have to go perfectly do you know what I mean it's fine and he's sort of Mm -hmm. like Whatever way he phrased it, it just, I was like, oh, and then I had like about 50 ideas about things I yes, wanted to do. Exactly. That once it didn't have to be perfect, I feel much more capable of, mm-hmm. you know, doing it or like an excited and creative about like, oh, maybe we could try this, maybe we could try that. But when mm-hmm. the goal is perfection, I just, it's so terrifying. I can't engage with it right. at all. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. It's like, it's like, I mean, the thing, the funny thing about doing your best is that it's actually the best you can do. So it's, it's so surprising to be like relaxing down to doing your best and have that be like, I was expecting the impossible. And now that I'm like, oh, I'm going to do my best. Like you say, now suddenly the ideas are flowing. We can come up with creative solutions. We can think about, because it, before it was like, oh, it absolutely has to go this way and it's completely rigid and there's no other options. So when every time anything threatened that, it was like an utter disaster and there's no way to fix it. Yeah, anyway, I totally agree with you. Joe, you know, it's funny, like when I was pregnant, I remember reading, somebody was like, like you're basically going to fail every day when you're parenting, especially mm. if your goal is that your child will never cry. Because you kind of mm-hmm. secretly are like, that's my goal and they'll never be mm-hmm. unhappy. And it's just so ridiculous. And it's so not dealing with reality to, mm-hmm. you know, but it also like you can't possibly go to sea or I can't possibly have 600 students come through a space and everything will mm-hmm. go exactly right. And sure. when you're like, 
if you could just build in the ebb and flow of like to your expectations like then you're not going to when your baby is crying be like oh my god I'm such a failure this is a disaster right. and just be right. like this is just a part of having a baby or this is a part of being in charge of a research cruise or whatever so yeah, yeah. so yeah you have your 600 students come to this event and gosh the extension cord isn't long enough after all and you got to go get another one <laughs> that's actually not a big deal you know, you'll right. go get another extension cord. Maybe there's a five minute delay. That's like the worst case scenario. Nobody even, it was not a, you know. So anyway, just putting things in perspective that the goal is to have an event that effectively communicates whatever it is you're trying to communicate. And, you know, you don't have people waiting in hours and hours long lines to get in or so. I don't know, whatever your goals are. But it's not that everyone thought of absolutely every single detail. Because who, who even really cares if somebody has yes. to run go get the extension cord? Totally. I'm really curious now to see if the extension cord thing happens. <laughs> Claire, you cursed us. No. But, um, yeah. Well, Claire, I'm so excited to hear about how the cruise goes. Like, that to oh, me thank you. is so interesting and exciting. And, like, it's something that I wish I was not so terrified of because I would never engage with that. But it just sounds like it's going to be so cool. It must be such a great experience. Like, in terms of collective industry and working together with other people, like I'm sure there's few things that compare to that. Yeah, it really is amazing to be at, uh, you, you form close connections because you're at sea within, you know, mm -hmm. however big the boat is of each other for the whole time you're at sea and you're eating together and you're trying to solve problems together. And um, yeah, it is really awesome. And I really do love being at sea and seeing the ocean and seeing the sky and seeing the waves. And oh, yeah. it's really cool. Um, so I am very excited, even though I'm also nervous. But I'm trying to remember not to be nervous and to just be excited. <laughs> well, I think a little of both is just perfect. Yes. But um, thanks yes. so much. Thank you, Ruth. Thanks so much for joining us on the Professor Podcast with Ruth and Claire. We're delighted to have you as a listener and we would love to hear from you. And if you want to email us, our address is contactprofessorpodcast at gmail.com. We'd love to hear any of your suggestions for future shows or professor quotes that you might want to share with us, or even just things that have come up for you when you were listening to previous episodes. And if you've been enjoying the podcast, we would love if you would spread the word. So the best way to spread word is by telling people you know, if you think they should listen to it, or you can leave us a review wherever you listen to your podcasts. Thanks so much for joining us and we'll see you next time.